Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we have two pretty big updates coming from BitDeer, one of them being a new Bitcoin ASIC model. We're going to talk about the Seal Miner A2 Pro as well as their next generation of chips, right? They did give us a pretty big bombshell of them potentially breaching that 10 joules of terahash threshold, which for Bitcoin ASIC mining is a pretty big deal because that would make them the leader essentially in the space okay so we'll talk about it we'll give our thoughts if that sounds good guys stay tuned let's get right to this thing so here it is the seal miner a2 pro which by the way pretty shit-tastic timing the a2 that people pre-ordered months and months and months ago literally just started shipping now right so they should have waited at least a little bit of time let people enjoy their A2 for a little bit before dropping this. Very uh, gold shell-esque, but here we are, right? So it's the A2 Pro. Let's look at the specs. Biggest difference is there is a bump in efficiency, right? So it goes up to 14.9 joules of terahash. So because of that, they did increase the, the overall hash rate on this thing. So 255 to 270 terahash, okay? So there is an air-cooled model as well as the hydro model. Hydro model being pretty expensive impressive at 500 plus terahash which is a crazy unit but we'll stay focused on the air cooled unit so comparing it to the previous model which is the regular a2 yes there's an increase but in reality not much right so the regular model is 16.5 joules of terahash so overall about a 10 percent increase in efficiency which although yes it's good in reality this is a model that probably shouldn't have been released because again in reality it's just going to piss off the owners of people who pre-ordered the a2 but for whatever reason they decided to do this right so when we look at overall profitability of this thing if we plug it in let's put a more realistic number at seven cents a kilowatt hour, which again, that's not a typical residential rate. If you're interested in BTC ASIC mining, uh, this is probably the highest you want to be at, right? You definitely either have a crazy, crazy cheap electric at home or you're hosting at this or under. Reason being, it's extremely competitive. You're competing against farms, countries that are either five, three, two, sometimes like as low as two to one cent kilowatt hours, okay? so extremely competitive it's hard to recommend anything beyond this cycle to be doing it from home you definitely want to be at this threshold or lower right you need to have every competitive advantage you can have okay so at a seven cent your daily income is going to be about 12 bucks your electric is going to be six dollars 38 cents your profit will be about five dollars and 55 cents okay so overall not too bad considering the price of bitcoin where it's at currently and where the hash rate and difficulty is at which is extremely high right now right people are going to be plugging in and it's only going to get higher as bitcoin's price goes up which hopefully sometime between now and the next six to eight months will be in a much better position as far as pricing goes so pretty impressive unit overall comparing it to the current king the s21 xp the efficiency on this guy is 13.5 joules of terahash okay so Definitely better overall with the S21 XP is just pricing. Pricing on this guy is like 7K, okay? And it's hard to pay $7,000 for an ASIC that's going to make you about, if on um, pure Bitcoin, about under $7 a day, okay? But again, factor in, this is current current market price. This is currently where we're at in the market, okay? Um, so overall, kind of just weird timing. Not a fan of it. Um, not saying not a fan of seal miner is just kind of an unnecessary model, right? So just kind of weird overall, because again, they're just really starting. They're just getting their footing in. I know a lot of people did actually pre-order the A2 just to have something different. It was competitive, not a fan of this practice, but it is what it is, right? Realistically, we have to see pricing on this newer model and release dates. Obviously, if you're interested in the A2, and that you haven't ordered and the a2 pro is within the realm you're going to want to go with the better model but overall if you order the a2 this isn't something that's a deal breaker like oh it's the end of the world it's a 10 percent efficiency bump not the biggest deal again just not a fan of releasing it so soon right if they would have waited like three months down the line i guess right but realistically to me 
more of an unnecessary mode, okay? Uh, so let's talk about the other big news, and this is the bigger thing. So, and again, kind of going with the theming of like kind of too soon kind of deal. <laughs> They're talking about their next generation chip already, and this is pretty impressive though, right? So Justin beat BitDeer nails it again with its latest SEAL 3 Bitcoin mining ASIC, logging an exceptional power efficiency ratio of 9.7 joules of terahash, surpassing market performance benchmarks. Okay, so... This would make it the king, although realistically, once it's inside the ASIC, it's probably going to be above. It's probably going to be closer to about 11 joules of terahash. The reason we're saying that is because they did release this roadmap quite a while ago, and so far they have been kind of hitting, right? We we're saying when this was released, it was extremely ambitious. They're hitting the targets as far as performance goes, but not the timing. Timing is one thing that were, they're definitely delayed quite a bit. Um, so we'll look at when the SEAL 2 initially was listed at, because it is a little bit misleading too when you're looking at this, okay? Because you're looking at it like, oh man, that's crazy. Once it's actually inside the ASIC and the real world product, it's been about a 10% difference, right? So we can even see here they have the SEAL 2 listed at 13.5, when in reality it's closer to that 15, 16. So the SEAL 3, they did hit pretty close there, but again, it's probably going to be about 10% higher. So expect it to be 11 to 12. Somewhere in that range, probably going to be just enough to beat Bitmain. Well, actually, they should beat it per, by a pretty good amount, right? So the Bitmain's at 13.5. So even just calling this 12, they should be able to beat it. Although the difference being is the Hydro version of the S21 XP, or actually the new model, the Plus, is down to 11 joules of terahash, right? So in the air-cooled world, they should be able to beat it. Not necessarily in the Hydro, unless they focus on more efficiency. So again, as we look at it, again, the SEAL 2... It's listed as 13.5 to 14, but real world in the actual unit, this column on the right, 15 to 16.5, right? So they kind of nailed it there. And then even for the SEAL 3, they're expecting that, which it looks like they did hit. So real world, they have it listed here somewhere between 11 to 12, okay? But again, the big thing is the timing though. So here they were expecting deliveries in Q2. Now it's going to be sometime maybe by the end of the year, okay? So... It's definitely coming. They definitely are expecting it. They're saying here A3 series in the later half of this year. I would expect Q4 at the earliest, but it looks like they did hit it, right? So, so far they haven't given us any proof yet, but expect sometime in the next few weeks for them to kind of release videos. Their test videos kind of confirming it just like they did with the SEAL 2, okay? So this would be a pretty big deal. And again, the biggest thing here is that this is definitely going to put pressure on Bitmain or any other competitors, okay? Because especially for what comes after, this is where it gets super nutty and they're expecting somewhere in the realm of five and a half to six joules of terahash. They're saying Q4. Obviously, this is going to be sometime in the bear market, sometime 2026. So extremely impressive. Just the downfall, though, is it definitely is going to make you weary of ordering any current Bitcoin ASIC if you're getting it for the long term in reality to really mine in the bear market if there's another bear market, right? Which reality, all that's theoretical. We don't know the way things are vibing. Doesn't even feel like that'll be a thing, although I think it will. But... This is what makes it hard, right? So I do love the transparency, though. I love that they are stating it. Like, this is, these are the goals we're trying to hit. This is our expected rates we're going to hit. And then they even kind of giving timelines, right? Which is something, in reality, we've never seen before, right? It's all, we're basing it off of what's happened previously. We don't know if Bitmain is really releasing the latest and greatest. Or if they're sandbagging tech from a few years ago. Although it's a little bit different in the Bitcoin space, just because there is so much bigger competition, namely for them previously, what's minor Canaan, all spending big money on R&D on those chips. So typically we do see latest and greatest with Bitcoin ASICs. A little bit different with the altcoin ASICs, we don't know. Sometimes we're getting a couple generational old stuff. We don't know what, what in reality is latest and greatest versus here we kind of do because it is extremely competitive. There's a lot of manufacturers releasing a lot of models because there is a lot of money to be had here still. Okay, so overall, pretty crazy. This would be the crazy one, though. If they were to hit this, who knows, right? Again, this is expectation. We don't know if it's going to be reality. But again, it just makes it hard to even, like, 
want to buy anything like even this one right okay so this one just released this is the most efficient i want to get it because efficiency is longevity i want to get the most efficient model even if it costs a little bit more just so i can mine for a longer period of time but then you see something like this and it's like oh by the end of the year we're going to be having this much more efficiency it's just because then you know if they're able to do it then guess what bitmain is also right so it becomes this game Kind of like what we saw play out with the altcoin ASICs, right? It's kind of crazier to see it on a bigger scale here. And again, there is a lot of competition and it's going to be a game of who makes it, who doesn't, right? So there are a lot of freaking miners. I counted them. How many have released since the beginning of the bear market, essentially? It's been over 30 models that have released, right? And that's not even factoring in. The other manufacturers who never released anything or the Desways or the, what was the other one, Chain Block or something, I don't remember the name of them, they never released or those Intel models or the supposed Jack Dorsey is still supposed to release one. It's crazy, bros. And it just, in reality does seem like an oversaturation, right? So it's going to be a game of who's the most efficient, who sells the most, We'll see how it goes. Aradine's another one. There's just so much competition. And there's such an oversaturation of the market, especially with a lot of these later gen ones. Because even just from Bitmain alone, right? We saw multiple releases. We saw the S21, the 21 Pro, the S21 XP. And now in the Hydro world, there's an X21 XP Plus, meaning there's probably going to be a regular S21 XP Plus or an air-cooled one. Also here in the short term, it's just crazy. Right. And even just from Bitmain alone, like we've been seeing these freaking I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, but they've been trying to offload all these old S19 Hydro models. They have this one here recently, two freaking dollars a terahash. Right. And this is for their little proprietary model, which to me is not going to be the winner. In reality, in the Hydro world, it's most likely going to be this model. This form factor makes so much more sense. A lot of other manufacturers are also making that similar form factor. So you're going to see things like the Ant Rack, but more made for those size ASICs a lot more than something like this, right? So to me, it just seems like they're kind of getting the hint also, and they're kind of trying to clear these things out between the Ant Rack and these older models, all right? So even though it is $2 a terahash, again, it's their proprietary models. And these are old specs, bros. 184 terahash, 5,400 watts per unit, right? So 29.5 joules a terahash. It's crazy to see the difference, right? It's literally, this new model is literally twice as efficient, right? So it's crazy to see where we're at in this game. It's crazy to see what's coming in this game. We'll see if it comes... We'll see how Bitmain responds. We'll see how these other manufacturers do. Again, Aradine just released that other one. Epic had released one also. It's going to be a rough game, bros. We know the ASIC game is ruthless. Now, it's it's crazy, right? So we'll see what happens. Um, very curious to see what happens with BitDeer. If they're able to continue. And realistically, how these models hold up. I think realistically... The biggest test is going to be how well this A2 actually does hold up. It does seem like there was quite a few sales of them, not only on the commercial front, but also from retail, right? We have seen quite a few of you guys comment that you guys did pre-order one. We'll see how they hold up because realistically, if they don't hold up, then these other specs for these other models just aren't going to matter anyway, right? You can have all these things in the world, but again, if the ASIC itself sucks, who freaking cares, right? Let me know in the comments, though, guys. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of them actually kind of so far hitting these metrics? Do you guys think that this is the one I'm kind of the most iffy on just because this is a big difference? It's kind of hard to fathom, but we're going to have to wait and see, right? So realistically, the test will be if the CO3 does come to fruition. Kind of gives more credence to this possibility also. Obviously, it's not going to be QT. Q2 2025, it'll be sometime probably mid-2026, sometime in the bear market, right? Which, again, efficiency will matter at that point. Crazy to see, though, guys. Let me know what you guys think of this. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I am out.